You can watch other business owners and entrepreneurs speak about business and it can make you feel like a failure pretty quickly. And in an industry um, where I'm constantly like speaking to people, surrounded by people, going to busy events, uh, funnily enough, it can still feel like a bit of a lonely place. And I yeah. think that maybe is just with any any kind of like business owner slash leader. There is a certain feeling that if you're not if you're not born and bred in London, like it's really hard to kind of break through that barrier yeah. with your peers. Where do you go when you want to learn to become a better leader? That's a good question. In my 15 years of being a founder, I've had some ups, but I've also had some serious downs. Um, sometimes I've struggled with leadership, I've struggled with making the right decision, I've struggled with imposter syndrome or even celebrating my wins. But today, I want to introduce you to one of the most humble founders I know who's been able to thrive through all of those things, Jessica Joseph. She is the founder of Season 25, which is an influencer agency which was created around three years ago, but has been able to get to a revenue of 2 million and growing. She represents uh, talent such as Madden Joyce, the Cabs family and Simply Shio. Throughout this interview, you will find out exactly why I call her one of the most humble founders I know. Please enjoy. Hey Jessica. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Yourself? Good, yeah, I'm good. good stuff. Busy week, but a good week. Good to be here. Um, I guess you will know, obviously, we've, we've had a few conversations previously that when you're running a business, it's really hard to give all parts of yourself equally. Yeah. And sometimes the self-promotion or storytelling part of behind the business is the bit that kind of comes last yeah um so when you reached out and said like you know want to hear more about the story and let's come and chat um i was keen to do so from like two business owners it was really interesting because we're, we're at different parts of our journey but there were so many things that we spoke about that were like similar experiences yeah for me um if to give a bit of context around the business itself because mm -hmm. we work in a service so we have clients and they all have very different needs yeah so if you think about managing um creators who you know, some are 23 some are 44 some have families um there are so many things as humans that we're experiencing all the time that we've got to be so in tune with uh, and i think that for me it's sometimes hard to find the balance between giving all of yourself in that position and also internally building the team and giving all of yourself to, to the team as well. One of the key themes that I did want to talk to you about um, is, is the idea of you um, building the team and what the experience has been like for you as well. Uh, I'd be lying if I said it hasn't been challenging. Um, I think the hiring process has been one of the most challenging experiences of, of growing a business and also it's it's not even just the hiring it's making the decision to start hiring so yeah. what, when is a good time and, and why and also it was we've already touched on this but the fact that i'm sat starting the business in a kitchen in my parents house yeah. versus having um loads of pre-business experience and working for i guess i worked for startups in a way but because i was a quite junior i wasn't in those meetings about business and how you run a business and mm. how to do financial overviews and how to write a business plan so actually throwing yourself into it is great but then when you look at all the building blocks that you need to take to like run a business you can see you can kind of understand that there are obviously some bits you're going to be good at and some bits that you're not going to be good at and i yeah. think a lot of conversations around business there are some not dishonesties but you can you can watch other business owners and entrepreneurs speak about business and it can make you feel like a failure pretty quickly because easily yeah nobody really discusses the like genuinely hard parts about running a business and although some people find it easier than others to do i'm sure i think by like glossing over it and making it seem fully glamorous that you know it will it probably puts a lot of people off running a business and actually those challenges and the failures you make and the bits that you do find really hard are the parts that make you well firstly they build you as a person um but we're all we're all learning at the same time and it makes us all quite similar i think lots of people don't realize that 100 um, percent. hey guys i just want to let you know that on november the 24th 2023 we will be hosting our first workshop of the year it's going to be focused on helping you to become a board member for more information visit the dream nation website at dreamnation.co that's dreamnation.co and we've got so four full members of staff which is exciting, um, sometimes daunting. When you look around, you're like, oh God, wow, here, here we all are at this uh, 
at this small, I guess, early point in the business. Um, and now we're hiring for two more positions. Yeah. So going through the inter interview process has been quite eye-opening. Uh, we had about 700 applicants for those two jobs. So so did you go through 700 cover letters realistically or Some did you have, have to... Some of them didn't have cover letters, so okay. it's easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, file away. Uh, but that was the most important part is seeing that somebody has taken the time out because they want to work for the business. That genuine passion. Okay. When, I, when I've hired for Dream Nation or basically anything I've done, I've always been really keen to not promote it too highly. Um, so a lot of the time I only will talk about it through, say, my stories on Instagram because for someone to have got to the point where they are following me, they're looking at my stories exactly. and they're paying attention, then you get those really, I guess, people who are already bought into your dream and your vision. Completely. So that and has... I've made the mistake of doing the uh, LinkedIn post with, like, I don't know, £10 I'd spend behind it and yeah. in, in, inundated with easy applies and because um, you were saying before some people didn't even look at your website right yeah that was it recruitment obviously in business is one of the hardest things managing people is one of the hardest things but I think the harder part which is probably more unique to you as a leader now is how do you know when it's time for you to actually bring people on board I think for us or for myself personally I had spent so long doing the same job um, that I knew we needed assistance even just on an admin level and kind of personal assistance to, to what I was doing it was a hard decision to make and it was made a little bit easier because my sister needed a part-time job so initially um, she came on to help on the admin side and, and now two years later is still with us and has joined full-time after she finished uni um, the second hire was a little bit more difficult because again really coming out of our comfort zone I've been working with the four talent on the roster for such a long time that it was a, it was comfortable yeah but to grow in business you kind of have to grow out of that comfort right, so that. yeah it felt like a good time to bring someone on and um at that point I was looking for another kind of talent assistant to really grow into the role and Nick won't mind me mentioning this Nick is our uh I guess he's talent manager, but also really working with me in business development now. So he came in um, and had a previous role in sales, and this was a completely different role for him. Yeah. And you know, we we met, and I was like, "Your experience is way too <laughs> big for this role." Yeah. Um, and in a similar way to what we were saying about how did you select that person, Nick's passion outshone everything. You know, he he was just like, "Look." I know it's a completely different role, but what you're doing with season 25 is something I really want to be a part of. It's exciting, it's new. Um, I want to support black creators and creatives. Uh, I want to be part of that journey and let's try to find a way to make it work. So we did. How did that feel for you? So you had somebody now that is really experienced, yeah. completely different industry, but they're saying they want to follow you and your vision. What that, was that like? Do you know what? That's actually... Um, I think that was one of the most uncomfortable feelings was, you know, as you said, we haven't done too much marketing. How do you, how do you know what we've been doing? And after meeting once in person, uh, we, we got on like a house on fire. And from that moment, like Nick was like, look, this is the only route for me. We're going to make it work. What you're doing is amazing. And I want to be a part of that. And I remember going home that day and being like, had the, the biggest imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't about like being on stage and talking about the business. It was that this person was so uh, committed, you know, and yeah. excited about joining the business when there was only me and my sister part time who he hadn't ever met yet. Yeah. And yet still had that real drive um, and passion for joining us. Imposter syndrome is something that is ridiculously hard for us as entrepreneurs to deal with. Um, I know for me, mo like more times than I can even count in my career, I've had to kind of go through that. Like you're doing something where it's like everyone else around you sees the potential, they see your work rate, they see everything else, and they, they know that you're going to succeed, but you don't feel that for yourself. I can definitely relate to the external view versus the internal feeling. And because we live in the digital age, we're obviously expected to showcase the best bits yeah. um, and really, you know, just going through the journey and appreciating the different feelings that come along with that. For me, there's a specific event that we did back in 2017, actually, where I was convinced that we shouldn't do this event. Um, it was this 2017 gala that was organised a big networking event, 400 yeah. or so people coming down for it. And I remember looking at the numbers in the bank account, um, looking at the way that people were, had the energy that was getting from the audience and turning around to the other two people in the leadership team and saying, 
we should not do this event. Uh, I just had no, personally, I had no confidence in, in being able to pull it off or even, even if we could, I was scared that the money still wasn't going to add up yeah. um, in terms of like, yes, if we sold our tickets, great, but then we still had to secure sponsors, get a headline speak or a headline um, performer, all of that sort of thing. And I remember being honestly terrified with that. Um, and it took both those leaders to kind of sit me down and say, you know what, Claude, we got this. Yeah. And it was tough. We did the event in the end. Um, but yeah, it was honestly one of the hardest things because you just don't know um, whether you should be. Exactly, exactly. Like whether you're trying to be, because at the end of the day, it's your job to make sure there's money in the bank to make sure everyone gets paid on your team. Yeah. And as much as they want to take risk and do all these amazing things, it's not them that has to deal with it when there's nothing there. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, the fallout or the potential fallout because you yeah, never know. Yeah. Know? And I think uh, that's, it's one of the most exciting things about running a business is you don't know what's coming next. Yeah. And I think that's what's keep, that's what keeps it exciting. And that's what pa- powers you. That's what drives you to, to do well, um, is that this could all change very quickly. Um, and so you have to just take your gut instinct sometimes and you have to be confident in your decisions, even if, you know, 100% of you is not saying it's the right decision. Yeah. And I find, I'm finding that with kind of time and experience, those decisions are becoming a little bit easier and feeling more comfortable. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up to our mailing list at dreamnation.co forward slash mailing list. And from there, you'll be able to find out about all the things that we have coming for you. Do you feel like imposter syndrome has led to you making a mistake when it comes to decisions in your company? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yeah, can you talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give I'm going to give an example. Um and obviously, you know, we're 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 still a small business now and we're still a small like roster of clients, a small team. Um it would be I mean it would be lucky to get to 3 years without making any mistakes. Yeah. And you can really beat yourself up about them or you can take them as a learning and use it as as a as a kind of um playbook as to how not to handle those situations the next time I think definitely in the beginning uh, when we were onboarding new clients and we've had we've had a handful that where you know the relationship hasn't worked out and um, it's been really amicable and we've just decided we're not quite the right match for each other I think there were there was one or two kind of clients that we've worked with where I let my boundaries really slip um, and when you're as I said in an act of like service job and you've got a team that relies on you and those boundaries are slipping and you're giving kind of too much of yourself there there has been a a couple of like toxic type relationships um that I've all I always knew when I was making those decisions and answering those calls and making myself way too available and potentially over promising or um you know not setting the right expectations that in that moment maybe wasn't making the right decision for the business but yeah. personally felt like oh, I can take that extra bit of work on and I'm sure it'll be fine and I'll just answer this quick call and that has an effect on your personal relationships it has effect on the other clients that you have and um yeah I think there's definitely some learning to be taken from setting healthier boundaries um and understanding like what's good for yourself as well as the business yeah Without a doubt, boundaries when it comes to clients is massive. So before I started Dream Nation, I used to run an agency as well in the media space. And yeah, like some clients just will, they will email you at 11, 11 o'clock at night and expect a response yeah. or they'll send you WhatsApp messages or calls, etc. And, and it's a lot. Yeah, if you don't put that in place from pretty much to get go, then they will take the mick. Yeah, exactly. And we, I guess in the projects that we work on, they're sometimes they're urgent and I get that there's lots to be done in a short amount of time and it's a really fast paced industry so and when you've got so many clients and they're all doing great things all at the same time it is constant you know my brain is constantly whirring and there's a thousand emails and there are phone calls and there's a lot to fit in um but if you spread yourself too thinly and in the end it all is too much you know you're experiencing burnout and you just have to kind of stop yeah that's going to be way worse for everyone yeah um so i think learning that uh 
fairly early on in the in the business and making sure that we have healthy relationships with all our clients like really open levels of communication and ways of working uh, that don't mean that we're 24 7 on 24 7 call um, has been a really good decision one lesson that i've learned when it comes to leadership and entrepreneurship is it's so easy for you to I guess set the pace of how your team follow yeah. in your case like have you seen your team like have any things around boundaries of the clients that they're serving i think one of the hardest things as a leader is 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 when you're asking for honest feedback being really open to what your team is coming back to you yeah. and, um, and saying even if it's like a little bit hurtful and you know we're all human um even if it is something that they feel needs to be worked on improved change like being really open to that feedback so yeah i would say that um right now we're in a great position where the team have got a great balance with the clients that we work with and at a point where there was less of us for sure i think that maybe there were long hours phone calls outside of working hours and it sometimes is inevitable um but we've stripped back to a place that feels good for everyone now and i think that actually because i'm using an example here of one of our newer clients yeah um who when they joined the roster asked me by the way like do we work weekends <laughs> right. just never had this has always been their you know full-time career and that's your baby so you know things need doing content he's creating you're at a shoot you're at an event you're at a premiere yeah they just are used to working seven days a week yeah so that was an option for me to say oh yeah you can message anytime and we'll be around or for me to say no actually we don't work weekends yeah. unless extenuating circumstances we've got a shoot to attend or whatever that is um and in this 24 7 hustle culture that we're really exposed to online and where you see other business owners and of course i'm always thinking about work like it doesn't switch off and yeah, yeah maybe i'm doing work behind the scenes but to say we are not available on the weekends and set that standard i think is really important and we we shouldn't be i guess glamorizing this like being com completely accessible and open to work seven days a week 24 hours of the day i do some coaching i don't know if you know that but we have really clear times for when the coach is meant to start and when it's meant to finish yeah but with some of my clients, I'm realizing that I'm really bad at stopping the session where it's supposed to stop because you just want to give them that little bit but, extra but it's help. because you want to, yeah. and that's it. And yeah. I think that you you go into a certain vocation because it feels natural to you and you love doing it. And I genuinely like love my job. I love yeah. managing talent. I love being part of the journey, love like building careers with them and being there in like the long term and having that really like successful relationship and it doesn't feel always natural to just switch off at the weekend mm -hmm. um but we all have factors of life that uh, need to flourish as well like hobbies and exercise and family and you know going on holiday and that kind of thing and the thing i love about your approach to boundaries and how you set up your clients is definitely um it stops stuff like burnout and that is a huge issue that I've had to deal with in the past. Um, kind of going back to that 2017 story I was telling about the gala, yeah. part of the reason why, in hindsight, I realised I was less willing to take that risk and pull it into the company is because I was really burning out. Um, I didn't quite realise it, but I was like, I wasn't sleeping enough. I wasn't yeah. like, I was working till, I think it was like 11pm every night, etc. Yeah. And it did have a huge impact on my physical and mental health over time. Massively. I think, I actually think that... Um, the confidence in speaking about boundaries only comes from being so close to the edge of, of what you've just kind of um, explained. Yeah. Being being really close to a point where I physically couldn't work anymore. And I think the nervousness around, you know, feeling like you're taking time off when realistically it's just the evening. <laughs> you know, it's just nighttime. You just need to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so You're not taking time off, you're going to sleep. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it came it came from being in a position where six o'clock in the morning i'm up i'm on emails i'm missing the gym like i stopped i used to love running i stopped running completely when i started working for myself because i didn't take half an hour to go for a run and when you start to weigh up yeah the effects on your physical mental health and relationships in general because actually continuing to live that way has a negative effect on the working relationships that you've worked really hard to build yeah you're not the best version of yourself everyone in your life is going to benefit from you being able to sleep well eat well exercise and actually you're going to be able to put more of yourself into those you know 
all, all the tasks that you need to create need to complete at work if you're feeling good at the end of the day you know we we all want to live like a happy life so I think that being a business owner is all about thinking about yeah the benefits of like sorry the success of the business and but it's also thinking about actually what is a successful team as well and yeah. they have to be fulfilled and happy and healthy um, in order to feed back into the business where do you go when you want to learn to become a better leader that's a good question i would say my instinctively there are three to four people who i who i know that i can lean on for advice that i can take inspiration from and who i really value the opinion of one would be a friend that i met actually at gleam who has gone on to build her own business and we kind of grown alongside each other. Um, she has managed to build an amazing business and it's always great to see another woman in a similar industry uh, achieving fabulous things. She's also really level-headed, so yeah. calms down. There's sometimes more kind of like off the handle reactions that I might have. I would then also look to the people that I find inspiring in the business world. Um, given a shout out i love Sharmadine reed who is the founder of the stack world yeah i'm part of the stack world so i joined that women's network because it was basically built around uh becoming a, a great uh a woman and leader yeah so leaning on people from groups like that that i've met through that will be going through the same challenges and then lastly i would say uh, my dad who is a business owner um, of a small business but also just has some a wealth of experience and has gone through periods of you know setting up a business with someone else and that not being quite right hiring somebody and that not being quite right so um i i you know, lean on him for his advice because i value his opinion that's really insightful and i think it's really key for us to set up those support networks around us and have that so that we can if you have someone to lean on because being a leader can be so lonely it can yeah especially and in an industry um where i'm constantly like speaking to people surrounded by people going to busy events uh funnily enough it can still feel like a bit of a lonely place and i yeah. think that maybe is just with any any kind of like business owner slash leader um, and i think that's why probably setting up a business with someone who you really know and trust is a probably quite an attractive um, thought to people because you've always got that person to lean on. Yeah. And I do feel really lucky to be in a position now where I can properly lean on the team and I, I value our, our team so much and actually um, it's much nicer working with them and going through the ups and downs of like running a business and making wrong decisions than it is alone. I hope you're enjoying today's episode. If you are, please make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. Don't forget to like this video as well. If you had the opportunity to go back and do things a little bit differently, would you consider having a co-founder or would there be any other changes you'd make in your, your business or journey so far? I would say I would consider having a co-founder. Yeah, for sure. It's not something that I would rule out. Um, if I was making the decision again exactly where I was at that point, I think I would do the same thing. Um, I felt I'm really driven in that moment and it wasn't a moment, it was obviously like weeks of thinking and uh, brainstorming and pros and cons and, and whatnot. The one thing that I might change, I think that I would change um, would be thinking a little bit less about the hiring process and actually just letting people come in and really try either prove, them, prove themselves and it might work out, it might not work out. Um, I think I've spent a lot of time just dithering, like, do they, does it feel right? Do I get, you know, and I, I, gut instinct speaks for a lot, but I think I spent a little bit too much time maybe worrying about that, those things and it would be better to have someone come in and be wonderful and, and get that process done a lot quicker. One of the things that I guess really has made you stand out to a lot of other founders I know, especially founders of your level of success, is that like humility and willingness to learn. Where do you say that comes from? I've mentioned my dad briefly in, in kind of being a business owner, but I saw him every day, you know, putting in the hours and working so hard to get to where, where he is now. And, you know, in my head, he should be this owner of a you know, huge business and he's still working as hard as he was at 10 years ago. And now he's nearing 60. Um, and also if you're looking at the background that he had, um, and you know, my mum as well, she's from Bradford, 
um, born and bred in Bradford and it's a working class city. I do feel that you have to work a little bit harder to get to where you want to go um, when you're living in a city that maybe doesn't have the same access to opportunity. And um, my nana came over from the Caribbean um, just after, not Windrush Generation, but after that, obviously, with the promise of this great life and uh, moved to a council estate in Bradford, had her children. And I've just seen my family work really, really hard to get to like where they are now. And I think that really it builds the drive in you um i've always kind of wanted to do well and continue that and make my family proud and and to build opportunities for my family in the future so i think it comes from that personal background as you're speaking you just made me realize something about myself and probably a lot of other people from london which is we are so london centric yeah <laughs> um i guess that not even guess like the vast majority of people in this country don't live in don't live in the city and with that said i think there's a whole another story about what you've like what you've experienced where you moved from your city you came to london to establish yourself would you have any advice for somebody who's up north or the midlands or anything like that that is looking at starting a business or developing their career like is moving to london the end all and be all or Oh, I'm on I'm on the fence about that one because um, it depends. Again, it's a, it's about the industry you want to work in. But there's for me, most um, industries now have their kind of headquarters in London. So you want to work in finance, you want to work as a banker, you want to work in media. Generally speaking, you instinctively think that moving to London is going to be the best option. But it's really difficult. Um, if I'm thinking about house prices and rent and affordability it's not realistic to think that most people from from Bradford where the average house price is you know somewhere between 125 and 150 to come to London and ever be able to to live the life of a Londoner um I found it really difficult I had you know something we haven't even touched on like massive financial struggles when I moved here because um firstly you don't have that network of people there's no one I could surf a surf with I didn't actually know anyone who lived here so you've got the financial part of it to think about you're building a whole new friendship group you're coming to a job where you don't know anybody yet and it really does throw you out of your comfort zone and I think you've got to be really strong-willed and know what your end goal is to deal with those kind of emotions because sometimes it can feel really lonely um so I would say think really hard about whether it is that you need to be in London specifically to succeed we're in again the work from home age because of covid and places like Manchester and Leeds uh, are really building their kind of media arms and I think gaining experience there before knowing cool this is really the industry that I want to work in before you make that big leap wouldn't be a bad thing Um, I love London I'm not trying to bad mouth it I love being here Um, I would say that from where I'm kind of sitting and, and looking at the people in my circles I do feel at a disadvantage because I wasn't born here. I didn't go to school with anyone. I'm like new on the scene. Yeah. Although I feel like I know the industry inside and out and I know how to do my job well, there is a certain feeling that if you're not if you're not born and bred in London, like it's really hard to kind of break through that barrier yeah. with your peers. Um, so how do you navigate being that industry outsider? That I think is sometimes where the imposter syndrome also comes from is... Um, do I, I don't have friends that I've grown up with to lean on around here who are, uh, you know, I guess shouting my name in a room because they don't know me. So yeah. you really have to put yourself forward and sometimes build a fake confidence <laughs> to just put yourself in the ring and have conversations and reach out to people. And, you know, you might have, there's so many people who have followed on Instagram for years, seen them at events and thought, oh, they're with, they're with people they know, they're with their you know, they're mates and I'm not going to go over and have a conversation. And you really have to just push yourself past that mental blocker and say, nah, I actually um, deserve to be in the room as much as as, as anyone else. And I'm confident. I know that I'm like good at my job and I'm happy enough to say hello. And if it, if it's, you know, if it leads to nothing and they say hi and they're not interested in chatting, cool, I'll move on to the next person. But yeah, it does. There is a mental barrier that you have to break down in order to just put yourself in that situation. What's the big win? quite a few big wins i would say actually better than a big win because yeah like your business is going to have lots of those what are you um what are you most proud of like what what's made you excited or making you smile i'm proud of a lot of things i am proud of 
the fact that one year in business is meant to be the hardest year. That first year, I loved every second and not many people can say that. And I'm really proud of the fact that we've built such long standing and enjoyable relationships with the clients that we work with. Um, the longest relationships I've got with uh, some of our kind of OG clients are, are nearing five years now and still feel exciting every day. And we're still having some really big wins as a teenager growing up and wanting to work in like journalism or marketing to be able to say that we've worked on like a global Nike campaign with an amazing young footballer um, or we've worked on a huge Disney campaign with a family who never thought they would be going to Disneyland. That's actually something to be really proud of. Yeah. And when this is all said and done, what do you want to be known for? Ooh, didn't have a think about that beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I would like to be known as somebody who um, has had a positive influence on in this specific industry. I'd like to be known as um, a business that has just a real strong mission, vision and value that we've always stuck to. Um, even if we grow to 10 times the size now, I want it to feel that like the culture of the business is something that has always been true to who we are. Um, based on our own values and that is that we are passionate we are collaborative um, and yeah I just want it to feel that I've had a positive influence within this industry that's really powerful the last question I ask all my guests is who do you think would be a great person for us to have on this podcast in the future I am going to suggest a very good friend of mine uh, Brona Monaghan she is a business owner, uh, co-founder with another unbelievable uh, like powerhouse, Elspeth Ray. Um, they have a management company called Mon Ray and they have built some outstanding careers for gaming talent. Um, she has, I think she's on to kind of running her second business now. Um, and as I said, is super knowledgeable, is the person that I lean on um, as a fellow business owner and friend and has a lot of different kind of skills to me. Um, she is a really inspirational lady and I'm sure you'd enjoy speaking to her. Amazing, we'll definitely reach out to her. Yeah, please so. so I want to say thank you so much for being on our show today. You've been so insightful, so honest, so transparent and that authenticity I think is really going to show through and actually really have a meaningful impact on our audience. So thank you for your time today and uh, looking forward to see you continue to win. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. We release a new episode every Sunday, so make sure that you subscribe and follow us so that you never miss out. If you'd like some more inspiration while you wait for the next new episode, then check out the recommendation above. Don't forget to follow us on social media and you can send us a question or a dilemma that you'd like us to answer on the podcast. This is Claude Williams, you've been watching Behind the Dreams and we look forward to seeing you at the next Dream Nation event.